Today, we're gonna to review the Angway Engine Pro Folding Full Suspension Fat Tire Electric Bike. Comes in at just under 1500 bucks, has a 16 amp hour battery. It's a pretty popular brand, so let's unbox it and see what it's all about. But before we get into this review, this bike has regenerative braking. Going down the hill, negative 35 watts, negative 100 watts, negative 300, negative 500. I can feel the motor like pulling back. Negative 70. All right, so we got a little bit of recharge going on there. It's a feature that almost every other review has seemed to overlook, and it's really not even advertised on the company website. And we'll take a closer look at the regenerative braking and how it works later in this review. One of my favorite things about these folding bikes is they're pretty much assembled already. Comes with four inch wide fat tires, 20 inches tall. So shorter wheels compared to a traditional fat tire e-bike. Disc brakes, 160 millimeter rotors, and it's a one piece wheel, no spokes. Anyway, here's where the bike folds in half. Full suspension for an extra supple ride. It's got a pretty beefy rear rack already installed on the bike for you. Working with hydraulic disc brakes and a hub motor of some sort. So it turns out this is actually a geared hub motor with regenerative braking. It really surprises me that nobody else is talking about this and it's not even advertised on the company website because this is actually super rare and it is one of the newest technologies in electric bikes. Metal fenders, rear light looks nice. Shimano Altus derailleur with the gear protector here installed already. And of course, if you have rear suspension, you've got front suspension too. You can either have it open or lock it out. Got a headlight. Wide saddle with a cutout. Quick adjust clip. Three amp charger, the good stuff. Folding pedals, tools. Ergonomic hand grips, thumb throttle on the left, nice feeling brake levers, controls. We'll get this display turned on in just a moment. Eight gears, downshift, upshift, and a matching ergonomic grip with some sort of faux feeling leather. Keys. Battery's fully charged, which I should mention, it does have a fan on the charger. And in order to turn it on, you have to turn the key on down here. Before we turn it on, I actually realized that this is actually, it says build-in energy recovery system on here. And it does have regenerative braking. There's a little bit of resistance on the wheel. And you can hear it makes a little bit of a noise. Let's turn it on. Anyway. From the factory, it shows distance in kilometers. Has a little power meter, which is always nice. Trip time, max speed, average speed, total distance, trip distance, typical stuff. Gives you your battery percentage in terms of an actual percentage, which is cool. Five levels of pedal assist. There's the headlight. It's got a brake light too. So check it out, this bike has automatic headlights that'll turn on and off depending on if there's light. So I'm just gonna sense the light and it turns off automatically. So pretty much you leave the light switch on and it'll do its thing. So there's a few things I gotta show you in the menu here. To access the menu, just hold the plus and minus for about a second, you get in here. Personalization, and you can choose to have the cruise control on or off by pressing this one. So if you find it annoying that cruise control automatically activates, you can just turn it off right here. And then if you don't like the automatic feature, if you wanna run some like daytime running lights or something, you could turn the auto headlights off as well if you don't like that. And then of course you could set your power modes. Of course you can change your units from kilometers to miles. All right, we're about to load this thing up in the car, but we're gonna try the hill test first. Let's just see what it can do on the 20% grade. I weigh 200 pounds. Not quite as expected. So we're gonna roll into this hill at about 10 miles an hour and full throttle it, pedal assist five now. So it needs a little bit of help, even with a rollout, climbing the hills. But really what these things are good for is loading them up in a car. So let's throw it in this SUV, see if it'll fit and how hard it is. We're gonna bring it down to the beach. Watch the fingers. 
how heavy it is it <laughs> how heavy is it not too bad but it's not light it's right in there so it's really convenient being able to skip the you know dangerous part of the ride I just do that click this guy into place click that into place it's got a speed limit here it looks like it's set to 31 out of the box and by holding the i button it changes from eco to normal to sport so my guess that's going to have something to do with the regen braking this bike is easy to get on with a relatively low frame to step over pedal says zero it doesn't give you any assistance so we'll put that on the one and you can feel that motor kick in so starting out we are on eco brings us up to five miles an hour we're going to start the strava right now to make sure we get an accurate reading on our distance pedal assist one definitely hear that motor making a little bit of noise back there throttle will bring you up to just five miles an hour even holding it down all the way on eco mode pedal assist one pedal assist two on eco brings us to 9.5 oh hell yeah well test at the brakes there they seem good so far they are hydraulic nice feeling levers you need to kind of bet them in try the suspension out a little bit here oh yeah oh yeah rear suspension oops we need to actually you know what we're gonna bump it on to sport mode i mean that's why we got the fat tires right might as well just bump it all the way to pedal assist five for now it's gonna be a bit of a challenge going through the sand oh yeah we can do it though hear that motor working how much power is it putting out 700 oh, I lost my balance keep going keep going so it's putting out about 700 watts of power and <laughs> starting out right away putting this thing through its paces not bad I wonder what kind of speed it can do Ooh, too much too much so there's a little bit of a lag on the pedal assist not much but so I'm not pedaling non pedaling now the motor kicks in and it it really puts on that power it kicked up to 999 let's resume back where we left off so we were on uh, pedal assist 3 on eco mode which is where we are now at bringing us up to brings us to about 15 and it is a cadence sensor, I believe. Pedal says four on eco mode goes to surprisingly fast. It's still putting out 500 watts of power at 20. Actually, let's put it on normal mode here now. Pedal says four brings us to 22, 23. 23.4 <laughs> this thing's fun it actually doesn't feel too goofy for a folding bike tell us this five on normal mode still giving me full power like 750 watts at 25 26 this thing's actually surprisingly powerful Definitely a little bit of uh, delay though on that cadence sensor, like a little more delayed than I've seen on other bikes. So I'm gonna put on sport mode now. I'm not sure exactly how this regen brake thing works because like when I'm letting off, like, it just shows zero watts and I don't really hear or feel a recharge happening. This thing definitely gives you some boost. Wow. <laughs> On sport mode, pedal assist five. I'm gonna do throttle only. I weigh 200 pounds. Ready, go. Kicks in immediately when you press the thumb throttle. So it's showing 1,000 watts, pinned at 999 right there. 15, 17, 18, 19, 21, 23, 25, 26, 27. Man, this thing is surprisingly fast. Yeah, it's definitely a cadence sensor because on sport mode, pedal assist five, like if I just start pedaling even lightly, it just pins it 900, 999 watts. 
So I'm looking at the menus here. You can actually get in here and set your power modes very easily. Like power one um, is set to 22% or power five is 99%. So you can get in there and adjust this stuff if you don't like how it comes out of the box. Very simple menus to operate on this spike. So I'm trying to figure out how this uh, e-pass regen works. And it's saying basically ride faster than 15 mile an hour with pedal assist zero or one for longer thanks to energy regen. Doesn't seem to make a difference whether, whether you're using just throttle or pedaling. You start to run out of gear at about 26 or so for pedaling. Going into the headwind, I mean, top speed's right about 28, maybe a little bit faster. Let's try out the horn. <laughs> Very high pitched. Beep, beep. So to comment on the riding position of this bike, it's very nice. I actually have the handlebars on like the lowest setting and it's comfortable. Try out that rear suspension and stuff a little bit riding through the grass here. You can definitely tell there's rear suspension. And on a bike like this, that's super beneficial because all your weight's basically sitting over that rear part of the bike. Uh, I can definitely tell with these fat tires and the rear suspension, this ride is much nicer than a hardtail bike, no doubt about it. And you know, this bike isn't really going to be for like intense trail riding or anything. Kind of like an overlander, so to speak. Definitely a very comfortable ride with these handlebars and you know, they can come up higher. Probably shouldn't do this while riding, but they can come higher even. Let's take a look at the saddle height. Right now I don't have it on like a really high height. Let's see how high it can go. I'm six foot five, so we'll put it like towards the max. And here's kind of what everything looks like on the max setting. So still definitely set up as like a comfortable position for a tall person even. And actually, oh wow, that's a lot better now. So my leg extension is almost where it needs to be for a person who's six five and yeah, this is nice and nice and comfy ride. There's another folding bike. Getting a little range update here. 3.8 miles into the ride, showing 100% charge still, which can't be true, but um, still pretty full apparently. Check it out. We're on sport mode. Pedal assist five. Rolling into the hill, 10 miles an hour. Giving it a little bit of help. It's actually conquering this hill pretty good. Nice. And that's the elevation we just climbed. I'm noticing that the cables are actually very tidy on this bike. It's not the case on all e-bikes. So I figured out how the regen works. You have to have it on either pedal assist zero or pedal assist one and be going faster than like 12 miles an hour. And then it'll regen when you let off. So really the only way to achieve that would be to do it under your own power or you could go on four and then bump it down to zero and let off and it's showing negative watts negative 35 right now let's go up this hill and see what else we can do here so what we're gonna do is bring it on up to speed oh. and then downshift to pedal it says zero going down the hill negative 35 watts negative 100 watts negative 300 negative 500 i can feel the motor like pulling back negative 70 and we gotta we gotta do a little break all right so we got a little bit of recharge going on there now personally i think it'd be really cool if they had an actual regen lever where you could just press on it and have like a progressive regen lever because these hub drive motors are capable of like really slowing themselves down so i actually think it'd be awesome if they had like you know a throttle on one side for accelerating and a throttle on the other side for braking but that's besides the point it does have regen brake so effectively if you're going kind of faster and you want to use the regen brake say you know you're on pedal assist five cruising along going like 20 what you would want to do is bump it all the way down to like zero and just coast now it's, it's generating negative 70 watts negative 35 watts and it's like basically just like a gentle brake being put on and you don't have to waste your brakes and recharge that battery just a little bit now based on my experience with regenerative braking i do have a high powered bike that has regen braking it doesn't really put a lot of juice back in the battery but it does help you save on brakes and it makes a lot of sense so it says three pump it on down to zero and regen negative 35 watts so negative 35 watts you know 
it's not like a ton of added, ton of uh, power to be putting back in there. But if you're on a steep hill going down, it could add up and be cumulative. Now I know what a lot of people are probably thinking, can you pedal the bike up to like 12, 15 miles an hour? And then uh, have it on, have it on uh, zero basically, and just charge the battery up as you ride it. Well, theoretically, yeah, if you're Hercules, but uh, realistically, that's not gonna charge your battery that way at all. It'd be a heck of a workout though. Let's check out and see how accurate the speedometer is. GPS in my right hand. There will be a little bit of a lag on the GPS on my right, which is showing 13. It does appear to be an accurate speedometer. So to give you a little range update, we're at 7.75 miles, almost eight miles, and it's still showing 100% on the battery. Certainly not 100%, but I mean, I guess it is making pretty good use of that battery. Now it's time for a brake test. Hydraulic disc brakes. Nobody's behind me. And, oh yeah, excellent brakes on this bike. The hydraulic levers feel great. The brakes really bite great. Even though they're only 160 millimeter rotors, uh, they have great stopping power and the feedback is great. Hydraulic disc brakes really are the gold standard. Usually the largest size rotors we see paired up to these hydraulic disc brakes are 180, but these 160 millimeter rotors seem to do the trick on these smaller wheels. So 20 miles an hour, 20 MPH, 21, stop. Oh, oh yeah, dude. The front end, like the back, I mean, the back came off the ground. So these brakes are really, really good. I want to do that one more time. You got to be careful on this one. The brakes are like so powerful. You can, you can lock it up and you could throw yourself over the handlebars. Now this thing's decided to show 99% battery after like eight miles, 98% battery. So after some hard acceleration pulls, it's seeing a little voltage sag there. Also, this does have cruise control. If you hold the throttle in, a, in one place for about 30 seconds, it'll throw you on cruise control. So that is actually another sweet feature. And right now I'm just cruising on cruise control, but to turn it off, all you gotta do is just tap a brake lever. All right, let me leave you with my final thoughts on the Angway Engine Pro. So a uh, 48 volt, 16 amp hour battery. I got about nine or 10 miles out of it today and it's showing like 97%, 100% full. Honestly, you know, I'd say this bike would get probably in the range of 25 to 45 miles, depending on how you ride it. Obviously that range can vary significantly depending on your speed and your weight. One of the most unique features about this bike is that regenerative braking. That is pretty awesome. As long as you have it on pedal assist zero or one and you're going faster than 12 miles an hour, you can get a little recharge. Mostly that's going to save your brakes going down a hill, but it will put some energy back in the tank, so to speak. This bike does cost a little bit under 1500 bucks, which I do have a link to it below this video. If you are thinking about getting one and you'd like to help support Tail Happy TV and these reviews, of course that would be appreciated. They claim you can get 75 miles per charge on the website. That'd probably be a little bit of a stretch. They also claim a top speed of 24 miles an hour, which I got more like 28 miles an hour. Throttle works all the way up the top speed as well. It's cool that it does have the eco normal and sport mode on this bike. So you effectively get like 15 levels of pedal assist since there are five levels of pedal assist on each of those modes. Despite the 160 millimeter rotors, the hydraulic disc brakes on the spike are excellent. And of course the full suspension. I mean, the rear suspension is great since most of your weight is sitting over the rear of this bike. So it really does make a really big difference for some light trail riding and overlanding. It's a very comfortable bike to ride. Folds up nicely. You can take it on adventures. Four inch wide fat tires, you know what they do. They take you anywhere. Color display and a reputable company that's been around and in the game for a while. So, I mean, really, for a folding fat tire e-bike, this is my favorite one I've reviewed so far. And if you're thinking about getting a folding fat tire e-bike, I'd say you can't really go wrong with this one. Click the link below the video, or if this is not the bike for you, watch this video next.